Ahoy, shipmates. It's another land-based activity. I don't know what you're saying to yourself. I thought this channel was called Solent Ships. Okay, there's no ships in this one, but we're not far from the Solent. We've just flown over the New Forest and Lindhurst. Over to the north of Lindhurst, a little village called Minstead. More specifically, the All Saints Church. There is a rather famous gravestone here to the author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. You may be familiar with his works, primarily those of Sherlock Holmes. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was born in Edinburgh in May of 1859. And he was also educated in the University of Edinburgh before he moved down to Portsmouth in uh, June of 1882. And it was during his time in Portsmouth that he first started writing um, about Sherlock Holmes. As you can see there's a often a souvenir or two on the gravestone here, one of the pipes of Sherlock Holmes and of course the ever popular magnifying glass. There's a teddy here in the colours of blue of Portsmouth Football Club uh, for which he also was a goalkeeper for a short period of time. While in Portsmouth Doyle struggled to find a publisher for his first work featuring Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson, A Study in Scarlet. It was written in three weeks when he was 27 was, and was accepted for publication by Warden Locke on the 20th of November 1886, which gave Doyle £25 in exchange for all the rights to the story. The piece appeared a year later in the Beaton's Christmas Annual and received good reviews in the Scotsman and the Glasgow Herald. As you can see, there's a rather lovely bench just here where you can enjoy the views across the fields and look at the gravestone. His next work, The Sign of Four, appeared a couple of years later. The cemetery here at the churchyard in Minster is not particularly large. There are a number of gravestones scattered around the surrounds of the church, some from recent times and some from hundreds of years ago. The church itself dates back to 12th century with parts of it more like in the 17th century. I certainly do enjoy a step that's been well worn. It shows exceptional use. There's a three-tier pulpit here. Apparently that's very unusual in terms of churches. There's some rather interesting stained glass windows at the end depicting something. Now if you look back you can see there are actually three tiers. So the ground was for the general parishioners, the middle level was for the minstrels and it's believed the top level was originally for the paupers of the area. The west wing of the church has a, another stained glass window at the end. Depicting some sort of knight I mean shining armour by the looks of it. I'm particularly partial to a Sherlock Holmes novel, so I was quite surprised when I found out just a, very recently that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle grave was so near to the Port of Southampton. There's this excellent gravestone behind, quite substantial and square, not something I've seen too many of. It's uh, the, in the name of Christopher Tower, diplomat, poem, Fleny, uh, from 1915 to 1998. He is a scholar and lover of Greece. It was said that not much is known about him, apart from the fact that during an earthquake in his apartment in Greece, 
he was quite keen to finish his jigsaw. There's a couple of Second World War graves as well. One here from the Royal Engineers. I think this is probably the most ornate tomb in the cemetery, surrounded by gates. Now, if you do arrive at the church, you want to know where to go. So you come in through the front, scoodle past the east wing of the church, up round the tree, head towards the large tree at the back, and then you'll find... Sir Arthur. Of course, after being at the graveyard, you'd probably fancy a pint at the trusty servant. I can heartily recommend it. Good food, good ale, and some open fires. And has a particularly interesting pub signed as the trusty servant, uh, with the description underneath, giving an explanation. And also a verse. A trusty servant's portrait would you see, this emblematic figure, well, survey the porker's snout, not nice in diet shows. The padlock shut, no secrets he'll disclose. Patient the ass, his master's wrath, will bear swiftness in errand the stag's feet declare. Loaded his left hand, apt to labour, saith. The vest, his neatness, open hand his faith. Girt with his sword, his shield upon his arm, himself and master he'll protect from harm. This is a 16th century saying and is believed to originate from Winchester College in the days when pupils at the college had personal servants. Possibly the first recorded job description of a staff required. And just opposite the trusty servant pub is the Village Green. A rather pleasant space to overflow from the pub garden to drink your pints. The church in the graveyard is just a mere hundred yards or so up the road. But I would take heed from the message from the trusty servant and be good, otherwise you might find yourself locked up in the stocks. Until next time, shipmates!